How are you? How you doing? You're all very welcome to episode 26 of Buckshot with your host, Tom O'Mahony. I say with your host. Is it, are you a host of a podcast? Or are you just a podcaster, the bloke listening? For the 20th of September 2017, you're all very welcome. Thank you very much for, for deciding to download or just stream, whichever. And if this is your first time, you're all very, very welcome. You're welcome too if this isn't your first time. But if it is your first time and whatever platform you're on, we're available on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher. And pretty much when you link in with all, any of those, for anybody who's thinking of doing a podcast, once you link in with iTunes and Stitcher and whatnot, you're pretty much, you can be found on most most but there will be a website coming I'm after getting a good schooling from uh, Gordon over at the Conspiracy Guys and we're going to sit down after a live show which is October 10th and he, we're going to finish building my website and he'll show me all the tricks to fucking get more people to hear about the podcast but so far I mean there seems to be a decent interaction there seems to be a decent amount of people listening and actually interacting well by interacting going good podcast <laughs> Which is perfect. Also, if you need to catch me anywhere socially, uh, the podcast here is Buckshot Pod on Twitter or Tom underscore O'Mahony on Twitter as well as from myself. I'm on the Snapchat, the Chatty Snaps, which is Tom Bear O'Mahony. You can find me. Um, Instagram, Tom O'Mahony Comic. Facebook is Tom O'Mahony Comic. I should really make these all the same fucking one, should now. Jeez, all the same name. Um, I don't know if you if you'd go looking. I think Snapchat is the only one if you don't have the bang on name, your bollocks. Like, but yeah, Facebook is Tom O'Mahony Comedian, and Gmail if you need to ask any questions or maybe request somebody. Because um, most of the guests, I think, will be uh, like we kind of all agreed that there's a lot more meat left in the bone. I know the last week's was two and a half hours, but even still, myself and Brendan Maher could have actually gone on talking for another two and a half hours. Like it was that much. So I think there definitely will be, including this one today. Like. Like, Ender was only getting into his straps, truly, like, he was like, fuck. But it was just time constraints, because in fairness to him, he's a busy actor. But Gmail is uh, bookshoppodcast at gmail.com, or Tom O'Mahony Comedian. Tom O'Mahony Comedy at gmail.com, you can catch me too. So that's all the the, 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 the stuff, the so, uh, house fucking keeping, as I talk about. House fucking keeping, well done, Tom. It was a lovely, how was your, how was your week? I'd had a lovely week. I've had... No gigs. It's been lovely. I've had stuff during the day, all right, like writing stuff and things to get done, but no stand-up gigs. So it's actually been the quietest week, I'd say, this year, but it's perfect because I didn't realise how much shit I needed to catch up on and arranging new guests for this and arranging gigs for next year and all the rest of it because that's how it's done, folks. You go with cap in hand. You don't, Luckily, thankfully, I don't have to do that too much anymore. I get uh, You get phone calls these days. Going or text messages going. You you free. That's that's normally you free on. Are you available on stuff like that? But yeah, the weekend. So I I wasn't going to. Not that I'm going to hang up the barbecue boots, but I'm definitely going to slow down and making big ones. Like I told you about the last weekend, it was a big ass group of people over and all the rest of it. But this one still had people over. Did some ribs. Um, they were gorgeous. They were ludicrous. They're from an organic cow, grass fed cow, which. Uh, Good God. Good God. Cow fucking organic outdoor pigs, I should say. Jesus Christ. But um, I actually put up the barbecue video. If anybody's wondering what brisket, what it takes to cook brisket, have a quick gander over on the Facebook page, Tom O'Mahony Comedian, and you'll see. I think it's up on YouTube. I think it's stuck it up on YouTube too. But if you just type in Tom O'Mahony Comedian, you'll find me. And it's one of the last videos put up. I put it up there last week. So it's, uh, yeah, it looks good. Like the video itself, I'm not very good at making videos and all the rest of it, so I just kind of curse and swear through the whole thing. But there's roughly in there, if you can go rooting, there's roughly in there a recipe of sorts. Of sorts, there's a there's a route to go on about it. I won't keep you too long today. Looking at the um, the news, we're uh, oh yeah, very exciting. This is coming out this morning on. I've been doing this early in the morning, but it's going to be on. Um, yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday the 20th, which is... Today is the day we go for turkeys. Very excited. We're getting bronze turkeys for in, in preparation for Christmas. We're getting bronze turkeys, which are... I don't know what they're called. I suppose when they open their feathers, they're black turkeys. You know, the, Af- or the African... <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Tom. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did it. I did it. I went there, folks. That's the dog. Ah, give it a rest, dog. I could edit out the dog. Fuck it. She's having a... She's getting good at the old bark. She's becoming quite a good security dog. I mean, yeah, she's getting a little overzealous when it comes to, like, there's a robin nesting out in the hedge outside the window. And she's losing her fucking shit over it. It's class to see it, but... Um, she needs to pick her battles, really. You're kind of wasting your time when you're, you're getting angry at a robin. But, um, but yes, the, these bronze turkeys, which have black feathers, are from America. They're supposed to be... I don't know. They're just a different... They're a little bit smaller, I think, than your regular white fellas. So, um, yeah, I'm going to steer right around what I do. <laughs> oh, lordy. It's very exciting, though. Very exciting. Turkeys, if anybody's ever never gotten turkeys, they're the thickest animals on the planet. Thick as shit. Like, they will stand on your feet and everything as they walk around the yard. Like, they're just... Like, they, they struggle to decipher walking around something. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're like those, those little... You know those robotic hoovers? Just keep on whacking off a thing until it moves. It's yeah, they're they're special. They are special. But they're they're um I'll tell you another day about the first ever time. I think I might have told it on the podcast to a guest at one stage about um about the first ever yeah, I think I, I might have spoken about it with two Johnnies, I think, today. About the first ever time ourselves stayed down and I had to process a bunch of turkeys. Anyway, that's for another time. What's uh, what's new? Oh, the, people are losing their mind over the iPhone? Although, I say people are losing their mind. I don't know one person who gives a fuck about the new iPhone. I never do. I never know one per- I've never met anybody who went, oh, I'm so excited about a phone. It's going to do phony things like my phone currently does. This one apparently has facial recognition. Well now. Well now, people. If you think that's a fucking good thing, and this isn't coming from some Jim Core tinfoil hat-wearing lad... But if you think it's a good idea to allow your face to be stored on a, mem- a, a mainframe, then go ahead and get yourself the new iPhone. Go ahead, pay a thousand dollars or whatever, a thousand euros, whatever the fuck they're charging for these things nowadays. Um, you go ahead and do that. And while you're at it, why don't you let them chip you as well? Let, let them put a chip in you. I know people go, well, if you're not doing that and rot, what? It, that's not the fucking point. The point is privacy. Privacy. The point is, it's like fucking tagging people back in the day. Remember when they did that? Well, you wouldn't remember it because it would have been back in the 40s. 1940s. And they were tagging people with tattoos. That's the same fucking thing. Oh, great, it's got facial recognition. What, you don't know what your own fucking face? What, what advantage is that to anything that you need in your life? Facial recognition. How important is opening your phone? Fuck's sake. Um... Pretty much most things probably have facial, but they, yeah, that was. I'm, I'm not going to rant too much about it. I think people would probably guess that your average smart person would know that this is a fucking stupid idea to have facial recognition capabilities in your phone. What do you need it for? You don't. What you're doing is you're giving them your facial features, and for them to store it, to link it up on any Big Brother and all the rest of it, just in case you have to do something. I'm saying you don't necessarily have to be doing something wrong, but just in case you, you want the option to be able to do something wrong. Something illegal, don't you? So don't people normally want to live like that? There isn't a person listening to this that hasn't at some stage thought about how they'd have to get away with a, a, slu- a, a murder. I'm, am I wrong? Am I wrong? See, at some point, and I'm not talking about you go out to murder somebody, just in case you have to kill somebody. The last thing you need is your fucking phone grassing you up. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Gigs coming up tomorrow night, birthday night. I'll be opening opening the uh, headline in the Coco Club down in Cork, which will be the opening of the Cork Comedy Festival, the yearly Cork Comedy Festival. You want to look at the lineup on this festival. It's so fucking strong. Like just just for a brand, a pretty much a brand new festival, two a year old. Like last year was the first year of it. To see like the strength, but Jane Russell of uh, of uh, my home village in Bancha, she knows exactly what she's doing when it comes to comedy. So it's going to be an absolute belter. If you can get down over the weekend, I don't know. I, I think I think the Coco Club is pretty much sold out. I could be wrong. There might be tickets on the door on the night of, but it's sold. it'll sell well anyway because city centre and all the rest of it. And I'm very, very fucking popular. Um, and I know I've talked about the November 25th uh, showing of Buckshot, my, my stand-up hour, uh, in the Museum of Comedy in London. November 25th but there's also going to be one 
just came up. It's going to be in new little venue. It's about a 100, 110 seater uh, little theatre upstairs, the Peachtree in Peachtree East Theatre in Tala. So that's going to be fun. I geeked there last month or the month before, was it? I think I was just doing just doing a headline spot and it went very, very well. It would I mean it would they were a great crowd, like, but the owner was exceptionally happy with the with the the synergy between me and the locals. Meaning that I just gave him abuse from high heaven for the more or less my entire set and he thought that's exactly what these people want. So that has now that will be going on sale in the next few days. So that's the seventeenth of November in Dublin in Tala. Peachtree East I'll be putting it up and they'll have it up I'll put it up on my Facebook page and like I said the website should be done by uh, October immediately after we're going to sit down myself and Gordon finish off the fucking website get it absolutely up and all the rest so you can purchase tickets and shit for shows through it that is November 17th but the big one is the 25th of November and I know there's I've just got contacted again this week about three or four or five people and there's a group of group a gang from um a, an irish chap that i know that i worked with last year he's going to have a gang going so i mean it's not a particularly big big room but it's a gorgeous little theater so it'd be nice to fill it we'll have a good old fucking good old weekend of it be good old good old crack and this is this is a good show i'm pretty this is pretty proud of this one this one is a yeah she, you'll enjoy it if you, if you like comedy, you'll enjoy this in a stand-up show. Anyway, moving swiftly along, my guest today is Enda Oates. I worked with Enda last... The last time we saw each other properly and worked together was on Damon Iver. He was Garda PJ. Was it Garda PJ? He was a guard on it anyway. <laughs> and uh, we He fell in love with Grand Owens at Series 2. Um, but I knew he was a funny fucker because just hanging out on set and then we talk, chat about it in the podcast. If you don't, if you haven't watched Damon Iver, you will have definitely have seen Enda in a few things. Like he was in everything, be eight or nine years in Glen Row. He's in currently in Fair City. He was in, as we talked about, an episode of Remington Steel. He was in Jesus. He's been in tons of shit. Like, but we talk about it again during the podcast. You recognize him the second you hear his voice. Like, and he's a great crack fella. He's some man for stories. Like I said, we'll be definitely doing another one. Like possibly even longer when I get. Mi- Get talking about uh, getting a studio and all the rest of it. Um, but for now, please enjoy the fantastic End of Oats. We're after the races. Lovely stuff. Yeah, the balance and everything is beautiful. They're handy oak, aren't they? They're handy. Huh? Sure, yeah. We're hearing the beautiful you surroundings. Like an ice <laughs> <laughs> well, I only stuck the, the tripod on it because it does raise it up, and not that it makes much of a difference. Because once there's not a ton of fucking racket, like I did one with um with Tom Green. Do you remember him? He was a mad bastard. He was on MTV back in the nineties. I do remember him. Yes, 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 I do. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we had we'd hung. Our, we, I toured with him all around Ireland for over four days, and. Couldn't find a good spot. I mean, look, I'm fucking driving you up to the airport now. We're getting in something here. And I I set a recording in a car and I went, this could be pure shite now. Perfect. As oh, good as could be. Like It's really? like it it knows you're being a tick bollocks by recording in the wrong place. Like, yeah, But it still yeah. kind of looks after it. Of course, yeah. And we were looking into Genie. How did... Because we were just before we came on, we were talking, obviously, that Oates became or came from mm. Kirk originally. Mm. What, is there any notion as to why they went, I look, half he can... You can stay Kirk... And the other lads here become an oats. Was there? Because I, we, the father now is mental for this kind of. Case. He would. See, yeah. I can guarantee you, he would know that because there's a ton of quirks around us growing up. Like, yeah. they're all farmers, and one fella's actually a jeweler. He's a handy out jeweler, actually, as it happens. John Kirk, Darren Care, little shout out to him. Well, but, you uh, see, the, with the talent obviously causes any. This is. Fun around town, by. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's always fascinated me, the genealogy thing, and particularly in Ireland. And, and maybe it's just a generation now are beginning to look at it because it's all kind of opened up again with uh, just finding out because a lot who of people, you, yeah. who you are, where you came from and all this. Yeah. And uh, the thing is, there's an awful lot of people that disappeared out of this country. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred years ago, you know, and they just, nobody knew where they were. Yeah. In my family... Um, my grandfather, there was 12 of them. Right. Uh, and he was the only one left at home. And nobody knows what happened to the other 11. 
What? Nobody all 11? All 11. Jesus Christ. One came back. Uh, 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 a granddaughter of one came back yeah. when my father and mother were still alive. And they came back, and then a whole scour of relations arrived. You know? <laughs> from Australia and yeah, America. From, no? Yeah, from America. Right. That we didn't know we had at all. But they were all from the one family. They were all from this one lady. Jesus. Uh, and, of course, they were coming back to the old sad. Of course, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we've managed to get rid of them. <laughs> Good, yeah, you ran the fuckers. Yeah. Out you go. Yeah, yeah. we buried them in a couple of bogs around the place. That's they the never job. Found. You're, in, you're from, isn't it Roscommon you're originally oh, yeah, from? yeah, right from the bog, yeah. Because we... The time we met was, and you cracked me up, we were on Demo and Ivor together. And yeah. we were going back in the Jeep, getting dropped back in, in home from set that day. That means we drive around in Jeeps. Yeah. Movie sets, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We were getting driven even. That'll tell you how. Yeah, it was a 97 uh, it, fucking Toyota, but it was all right. Yeah. But you know what? At yeah. least it wasn't a Kia or something. Do you know yeah. what I mean? At least it was a Hilux they dropped us in. They put us in the back. We were yeah, in the old did. pickup truck with a few bales. Yeah. Yeah. But your man, but you were telling a story when you moved to Dublin first, the wildness of country lads when they moved up. Oh, yeah. And I remember you cracked me up with this story was this going to like discos or what was it like just because there is still a savagery but i think that savagery is kind of wearing off a small bit as the world is getting smaller with the internet like there's it is yeah but i mean we were all innocent lads when we came to dublin first. yeah You're like it's nothing like now even when i was walking down here to meet you today i was looking and you know there was uh, in the 1980s when we all came to dublin we knew nothing about sex we knew nothing about anything you know yeah and uh, there was only a few pubs that you all frequented. Uh, but uh, I remember, um, I think the story we're talking about is I remember going to Barry's Hotel. Many, yes, many years I think ago that might be it, yeah. Because uh, I, got a, um, I got a kind of uh, number one haircut for some reason. I don't know why I got it. But I looked like an awful knacker. Just you know why you did it. You did it because it's cheap, and you get money. You get your money's worth out of it. That's why yeah, you did yeah, it. Yeah, I did. And uh, I had a suit at the time, but I wasn't. Uh, I hadn't worn a suit in a while, and uh, so I took out the suit, and I thought, uh, actually, fuck it, we'll give it a go. And uh, but I, I bought a pair of shoes. I remember I bought a pair of shoes, and I must have looked. I don't know why I was about. I was 23 or 24. I must have looked fucking... It was this early 80s, like, to us. It was. And I don't know what convinced me that Susan McCann right. would be the gig to go to that night. <laughs> don't fucking ask me why. <laughs> but I put on the suit, a yeah. uh, pair of good pair of leather shoes, a okay. uh, pair of brogues, uh, and uh, headed up to Barry's. And it was like going into uh, something out of the cuckoo's nest. <laughs> <laughs> Every age, size, you know, <laughs> fellas like lured down from the mountain, like, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. And um, but I remember it was packed to the fucking rafters, and, and the drinking like lads drink now, but Jesus, like, uh, you, you, then times you didn't drink every night, you just drank for the weekend, like, yeah, that was it. yeah, yeah. So you crammed lads, it in, like, just... yeah, and there'd be fellas, you know, every kind of. But I do remember at one stage, anyway, people would forget this, but the shutters would come down at the end of the night. To, no, to, it's still, still, I remember it used to happen, we used to go to a place in a, in a small town in Tipperary called Emily, yeah. and the very thing, same thing would happen in, in, the high, in the Tetch in Emily, actually. Yeah. The tr- shutters would come down, your fingers were fucking coming off. Your fingers were coming yeah. off, but, basic, but uh, for some reason, people didn't think that that was the right thing to do, and just kept shoving up the shutters again and demanding more drink. <laughs> and of course... The old thing bought her eight pints. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and yeah. getting it out and spilling it and everything. But <laughs> I do remember anyway, the shutters wouldn't go down at the end of the dance. It yeah. just wouldn't go down. So what they did is two of the bouncers came in and the, the brass uh, foot rail at the bottom. Of the oh, bar, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? One fellow went to one end and the other fellow went to the other end. And they lifted up the brass rail and Jesus. all the crowd and they just put it in front of the crowd and... Ran them back into like the cattle. wall, like cattle, <laughs> and I in the middle of it. Right? <laughs> well, so your man could pull the shutters down, and that was the end of it, right? <laughs> Fuck! But there was so much glass in the floor that the uh, the shoes were torn off me. The they good were shoes destroyed. I mean, literally <laughs> destroyed. <laughs> it was like it was like Stanley knives. I had, you know, sat down and someone tore the shoes off. It sounds more like something out of a, a like nineteen thirty nine Germany. Do you know what I mean? Like, this sounds like a hellish carry-on. That it was, uh, 
Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? We were all going to go to bundled onto trains after this, like in Central. But it was, it was like, it was like a John Ford Western. Really. You know, <laughs> right. it, it was basically, and you know, so it, it got down to that. It got that dirty, you know. Jesus, <laughs> it was a dirty night. Eh? But Susan McCann gave me the wink, so you know, that's your, all right, your yeah. week was made. And what were you it's working cool. at then at that time? Like, had ah. you gone? You hadn't gone straight into acting. No, when I was you moved in, to Dublin I was, I was in. I was in uh, the Revenue Commissioners. All right. Yeah, I worked in the revenue commissioners at that time. Do you know something about that? There's a funny story here. Um, in those times, uh, there was a lot of cash that was dealt with. Of in, course, yeah, know, yeah. W- when people, they didn't deal with checks or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, checks, yeah. There was no credit cards, there was none of that stuff, no ATMs. So when someone had to pay their VAT or their income tax or whatever, yeah. they'd send it in in check form. Basically, you couldn't do anything else in check. But people used to send it in, in cash. And we used to work, we were only young fellas, but we used to work in the cash office downstairs in Chalk Earlsford, which became a sick building, it became known as a sick building. But that's another story. But anyway, I was sick that morning <laughs> after Susan McCann. But, um, the, uh, but we used to have somebody that walk around behind us. Uh, to check the cash that when we'd open, you'd have to open all the envelopes was open. Oh, right. So this is almost so, like a, in, in a drug cartel kind of a setup. Like they were, did, they didn't make you not absolutely naked from the waist up or anything. Uh, uh, well, no, but they didn't. <laughs> but what used to happen was, and this was an extraordinary phenomenon. Yeah. They used to have a thing called conscience money. What? So if you cheated on your tax. Yeah. And you were going to mass and you were good Catholic and whatever. The, the morality of that caught up with you. So I right. used to send in envelopes of cash. <laughs> no um, documentation. Or maybe a small letter saying, I believe I owe you this. Or, Holy. Please find. Jesus. Inside two and a half grand in cash. And what was done with the conscience money then? The conscience money would, well, that's why we were being watched. <laughs> Would it go back into the coffers? Like, it like, would go it... back into the coffers. But that's what they used to, it used to be known as conscience money. That's hilarious. And an envelope would come in with money, conscience money in it. Um, and uh, But then there was a lot of cash anyway. Yeah. You would get cash with documentation. But conscience money, every morning, there'd be a few envelopes, conscience money. By oh, Jesus, God. could you ever see yourself handed in conscience money? I'd no. say there isn't much... F- no, I, conscience money going in these I days. I see myself staying in the cash office that that long, even for with all the conscience money coming in. And no. what was what was the the first decision? I'm out of here now. This is it. Acting is for me. I remember um, Chris O'Neill. The late Chris O'Neill was um, he, he. For those that might recall this, and it's highly unlikely with your listenership, you have the young hip kids that's listening. Oh, don't worry, I'm not hip yeah, or young either. Such as all right. So, uh, well, you wouldn't remember back to this. The Reardons had an actor uh, called Chris O'Neill in it, which they've actually opened a street in Buffalo. Uh, in in New York? In, uh, upstate New York. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They have uh, opened up a street for him in his memory. Jesus. Uh, but that's a whole different story. Again, he went off to the States. We might have from. to do about five podcasts. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, Chris uh, was in the Regency, played Michael, who was Benji's brother. Right. And Chris was a bit of a ducker and diver. He, he won't, he's dead, he won't mind me saying that. But his daughter works with me now, actually. Right. Uh, Ashley. O'Neill, who plays uh, Carol in Fair City. Okay, wow. Her dad started off in acting school in Serpentine Avenue in the old Oscar Theatre, which is now a mosque. Serpentine yeah. Avenue. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with that you, yeah. That was the yeah. Oscar Theatre. And uh, Chris used to put on body shows. Yeah. Like, where someone would get their tits out. Great. In, in the show, and, and he did awfully well. Yeah. So I he can... made a bit of money. And he decided to start an acting school. And uh, it was a kind of part time and it was basically for people who were half in the business and didn't know what they were doing sort of yeah. thing. So uh, I was working, um, I, I was working in the civil service, but I had done a bit of amateur dramatics and I said, do you know what? Somebody told me about it and I said, I'll give this a go. I'll see what it's like, uh, you know, um, at the weekends. So I went in and did a course the weekends and we had people like Alan Stanford was there, uh, Ray Yates, who's, who's kind of who's done a lot of stuff over the years and Vincent, uh, Kevin McHugh, all kind of actors I've yeah, yeah, known and that, you know, who were, who were practitioners. And uh, cut a long story short, and I went in and I did a season uh, um, tuition uh, at the weekends and uh, 
it started off in 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 the theatre in Serpentine Avenue, and then it went to the old Central Hotel, which is not far up the road yeah, from yeah, where yeah. we are now. And uh, that was falling apart at the time. You used to have to go upstairs, and the planks went across, and you were looking down. Jesus, yeah, and you went into a room. We had rooms there. But that was the old days when you could find a place it in safety. Like, yeah, yeah, you know? and there was no bother about. It. But anyway, he. Um, so I did that, and then they said, would you come back for the second uh, year? Now, there was people like Mary McAvoy was there, had gone in, Owen Rowe, uh, a lot of really, Hilary Fanning, who writes for the Irish Times now, if Hilary Fanning was an actor, there was a lot of us in there that kind of, so there was a nice bunch, and I kind of liked it, and uh, it was a very famous old lady uh, who was the head of drama in RT at the time called Chloe Gibson, and Chloe Gibson was very famous because she discovered... Uh, Dirk Bogart. Oh, right. Yeah, and she kept in contact with Dirk all her life. Uh, and they became, they were great pals. And uh, he mentions her in his, his biography and everything. And she talked about Dirk, darling. She wrote, she wrote to me last week, you know. and uh, Fantastic. So he, she kept in contact. So she, I, mean, I got, kind of took a liking to her as well. And between the long and the short of it, she was actually one of the people who started the Reardons. That's how she knew uh, Chris. Yeah. Anyway, um... I did a season, as I said, I went back, work, I was working during the week in the civil service, and through that I met a couple of lads that were working out at Trinity College, John O'Brien, and uh, two lads that used to work here in the Stags Head. Go used away. To have a little theatre called the Dry Mouth or Dry Bread Theatre, and they used to do stuff down here. Where we are now. Where we are That's now. That's hilarious. Uh, Liam Kearney, aka Carnage. Yeah. And Frank <laughs> O'Sullivan, right? And they, Dry Bread was the name of the company they had. And we all kind of met up. We used to drink upstairs here, actually. And um, we went down to Trinity. Rough Magic had just started in Trinity College. And they, this then there was a breakaway group and they were going to do a season. We did a season of plays. Uh, I ended up with them and we did a season of plays in Trinity during, uh, during the summer. So I used to kind of... Uh, uh, I worked till 12 o'clock on the flexi time, run down and do the show in Trinity right. College and go back. And I remember, uh, and that got me kind of noticed. And there was a great um, guy in the evening her called John Finnegan, who used to, who had followed theatre all over the world. And he was very famous. He used to have a column of Saturday. And he gave me uh, actor of the year or young actor of the year. So I thought, I'll oh, fuck it. You look, at, I, I, I'll, 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 I might take the career breaks will come yeah. in. I might take a year out and yeah. see what's happening. So uh, I took a, a, a funny story because the assistant principal at the time when I went in to tell her I was going, she said, but you were never doing tap of work here, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're a civil servant, in fairness, let's be real. And I said, she said, I used to be looking at you. You'd have the script under the table, <laughs> under the desk, pretending. And I thought I was getting away with this, you know. But anyway, they were very supportive and, and they let me off. And one year went to five years and I toured with Chris and Chloe doing Shakespeare and... Um, for a while, and then uh, I stayed with it. Then I ended up, after a while, doing a bit of telly. My first telly was with uh, uh, Liam Kearney and a few others, which was actually, um, was, uh, um, what would you call it, a uh, um, promo. Um, what do they call when something comes out first and then they do the whole series? What do you call it? The first oh, one? pilot. Pilot. Yeah. Two jizz, there you are. I'm in, there you are I'm in now, the business yeah. a while. <laughs> uh, we did a pilot for it uh, uh, for an urban series, which was called City Limits. Right. And uh, it took me 25 years to get into it. I asked him before I ended up in the fucking program, just for a city. <laughs> right. So, uh, so Fair City was originally City Limits, is what it you're... was. City Limits in '87. Right. But, what? But it was so bad. Yeah. When they looked at it, they just thought this is awful. <laughs> and uh, I thought I'd never work again, but I ended up in Glen Road then. You're the Reverend. I was, the, yeah, director. Director. Director, well, I nearly killed her. <laughs> Which is ironic because we were talking that the name Oates is quite, can be it's yeah. seen as quite a Protestant, but you're not yeah. Protestant because you're I mean, in that. Wesley Burris at the time thought it was hilarious that he called me black because I was Protestant. Was George Black Protestant. <laughs> Protestant minister. Yeah, well, he could have called you orange too, I suppose, yeah, couldn't he? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But I was from um, Calesta, so it was all right. Oh, right. oh yeah, 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 yeah. But where? Um, how long were you on Glen Road then? Because that was, that was a staple in people's lives. Like, I mean, that was. 
I mean, you, mu- you must have been a bit of a rock star at the time, like, because it was fuck all else on. Yeah, it was fuck all else on. Like, we were rock stars, really, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sex, drugs, and rock but and roll. It, it was in the age of the AIDS. We oh, all, yeah, of we course. All, we all yeah, had yeah. AIDS at the time. Yeah, so. yeah of course you all had AIDS. In fact, there was no... <laughs> You, know, you weren't getting the fruits of it at all. You no, know. your your leather trousers were pointless at that stage. Pointless, yeah. everything, every piece of me. Uh, but um, yeah, I did nine seasons on that um, as you know, uh, as a Protestant, and managed to keep playing a part of a Protestant rector in in in, our, in an Irish society and be liked for the, you know, or, or like somebody liked the character keep him that long. I, would, I said if I can keep it up for that long, playing a character like that. I'd but you, be, you, you, a lot of your. A lot, uh, well, a, not, a, a, quite a few, given that you have worked as a civil servant, you have worked in, a lot of your characters have been uh, people in society, you know what I mean? Yeah. Members of society that are normally either civil servants or, or that's because you've been a guard a few or times. Gales. Yeah, gales. Yeah. yeah. Well, I suppose West of Ireland fellas too, like, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. yeah well, I mean, anywhere outside of Dublin, really, and you're... Anywhere there's a soft bit of ground underneath you. Yeah. <laughs> And you get thick when you get stuck in it. <laughs> there was no send, temp- them up, send them up to the guards. There was no temptation to head to Temple Moor yourself, no, out of Roscommon back in the day. I remember, actually. Uh, yeah, I went for the guards at one Did stage. Did you? Yeah, in, I remember going up to the, the barrack in Rathmines to be interviewed. And this big, thick fucking guard came out and, uh, and brought me upstairs. And he must have been, say, I, I, I don't know, what inspector or something anyway, or... Super, I don't know what he was. Anyway. So he says, uh, I remember him saying to me, um, where are you from? And I said, Roscommon. And then, oh, Rory Brady country. <laughs> I went, yes. Well, yes, he, he, he lives there. Do you know him? Uh, well, I wouldn't know him personally, but I know the lads. All right, right. Because now if you were going to join the guards, like, <laughs> you'd want to be, you know, if I was to come in and hang the jacket up beside you, I'd want to be able to trust you. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> what the... What? Right. And I went... Straight away, I had myself down as, like... Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, he, he was... Pre- he kind of took the thing that, you know, would you be, like, in here... Uh, would you be trying to come in to be an informer? I don't know what... Oh, Jesus about. Christ. But because of uh, the geographical area I came from and the proximity to... You know the head of the official IRA, yeah, but yeah. had to be something behind it. You know? Yeah, of course, clearly you, you were. Yeah, you. Were. But the analogy of you know, if I was to come in and hang the uniform jacket up beside you, uh, beside, <laughs> you beside yours, <laughs> you know, would that would you be the type of man that I could trust to know something shite like that? If um, I buttered my bread beside yours, yeah, yeah, would there be any jam? Yeah. It's would be a man that stand by me. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, I, but it was it, it kind of. I remember I, he terrified me, and uh, I remember turning round and walking out the door, and I was about four steps down the stairs, and I turned back, and he was standing uh, with the good straddle on him, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hands yeah. in the pockets, looking down the stairs at me, and I went, "I know this isn't for me." Yeah, you know. He just knew in that moment. To fuck this. Yeah, yeah. So I rang Brady and told him. No, yeah, yeah, no, we're not in. It's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, would you favour more the, the stage than you would TV? Uh, you know, I, I, I love the stage. Um, um, I haven't done anything on stage in a while because uh, I made a conscious decision. I'm going to folly telly now and I'm going to, because I'd learned all the craft on stage and I remember doing a show recently and... Um, I went in, and it's not anything to do with the young crowd that were in it. There was a young, there was good actors in it. Yes, yeah. uh, I couldn't understand why we weren't working fast enough, and I couldn't understand why uh, nobody had stagecraft. Right. Uh, you know, um, like for instance, if you're standing, the, the eye from an audience member, uh, they look from left to right. Yeah, that's the way they follow the eye. So you must stage. Stage to look like. Yeah. The best place in, is the centre of the stage. Yeah. But there are other places on the stage that you do. And so the audience members always has to see everybody at a particular time on yes. the stage. So if you go downstage at somebody, mm-hmm. you're lost because they're seeing profile. Yeah. If you go behind somebody and the other person has to throw lines back at you, then they have to turn their it's back. It's not worth the shit at all. It's not worth the shit. So there are basic 
formulas that you have to learn. Yeah. You have to learn that stagecraft, right? And if you try and say, no, we're going to change all that, then bollocks, you're not going to change. You but can change the play, you can do wonderful things, you can set it anywhere, you can try anything. Yeah. But you must be able to have the basic block. Yeah. You have to be able to basic Like block. a car has to have wheels so, and that's just yeah, it. Yeah, like, so that kind of bugged me a little bit because you'd say to somebody, you're upstaging and they'd go, I'm not upstaging. And I said, no, I'm not. This is not something. Because I only learned this last year because I was, for my first time ever, I was in uh, a, quite a serious panto down yeah. in the University Concert Hall in Limerick. Oh, yeah. And I was, the, myself and Carol Spain were the only two gobshites yeah. who'd know what we were at. But I was desperate to learn because... Yeah, yeah. And these were all proper theory. Do you know what I'm talking about? And it was, upstaging was explained to me, like, and yeah. and, they, and they'd be quite dramatic people that do things like panto, like, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And they will... They, and it was then it was explained to me and positions on stage positions and sidelines and all the rest of it. And forward. I was very conscious of this. I went, oh, co- will you tell me where to fucking be? And why I should be but there, remember, and I'll be aware of that yeah, then. Yeah, like. I remember saying, "You're upstaging," and they go, "I've never upstaged. I, I don't upstage." No, you, you're missing. That's an, that's something. Yeah, yeah, it's an abbrevi- says, Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. This is this is the this is like a, a carpentry. Yeah. When you're upstaging, you're too far up. Yeah. And you're making me play it all back, and the plot up is, being the back wall. Yeah, the plot is down played. being the front of the yeah. stage. Yeah. So the plot is played to the back wall. Yeah. Because you're up. Because you're afraid to come down. Come to fuck down. Yeah. Come down the stage. <laughs> they want to see it. They've paid to see it. They've paid to see the show. Don't be fucking hanging to the back wall. Yeah. Up there. Come down and you get... There, there are three kind of angles. Yeah. They yeah, have, yeah, yeah. You know, left, right, who's up in front, who's back, depending. And move back when it's not part of the action. So you're not... You're not prominent. Like, so you're yeah, not yeah. standing in the middle of the floor every time the dead body is being dragged out. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Lemon, yeah. So these are basic things. Yeah. And I found that that was lost a little bit in theatre when I went back. You know, I would have thought that would be the first thing you'd learn going in day one. Well, you see, you did, you said you did it in pan. You, you would. Yeah, I learned it first day going yeah. in. But the point is, I learned it from somebody who knew how to do it, who thought, it, okay. thought it was important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you see what I mean? Uh it's not thought as important now because everybody, like everything else, thinks they've discovered. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, straight away. Yeah. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm giving out or whatever, but I, I wouldn't have the patience to. I'll do a two hander. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you can't be dragging them all on with you, like, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but I'd love to go back. I just haven't been offered anything good, basically. That's it, you know. It's not in kind of. So, I'm uh, writing a play at the minute, and right. uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I see it there hanging out in yeah. your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in the back of a fag box, yeah, yeah. 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 <clears throat> so the, I suppose in that, but I would. Yeah. And the answer is, yeah, I'd love to go back. And do but it, it's, it's the right thing, you know. It was. A, but I can't put up with the show. I, I can imagine it, but we because I was having explained to me that how it was explained first day was in a story that this he was a main main act and he's been at this all his whole life. He's done nothing else but the stage. Like, but he said um, how he was with quite. Well, you'll know the person I'm talking about, but I'm not going to mention her name in right. this, right? But she's she'd be quite the diva, right? In the panto world and. Him and horror were having a... It's narrowed it down to one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, him and horror were having a conversation as part of the panto, but she would step back oh, yes. a foot. Oh, yeah. To, and oh, yeah. he... And pull, he pull, 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 the eye, pull his eye line off. Yeah. But turn, uh, forcing him to turn forcing his shoulder, to turn into, his shoulder it. into it. But he copped what she was doing, so he'd take a step back. Back, yeah. And it, he says, before we know it, he says, we hit the fucking back wall. Oh, and I said, no, it. explain this to me now. And he says, look, this is, and this was day one. And he explained, he said, you need to be this. That. And in fairness, the director was like, oh, you're explain, oh, good, because I was going to have. Yeah, it's no good for the director either. He, well, he's, he's a sound fellow, but he went, good, I don't have to now fully explain that. T- t-. I said, I understand the stage to a degree, because as a stand up comedian, it's all about where you're positioned on the stage and what yeah. you fucking look like and what you're doing at a certain time and everything. Uh, but, yeah, but see, Tom, you, 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 were, you, you were not there to do, you weren't there to fuck around. No, so no, you, no. You go for it, yeah. yeah. But you will get people who go, no, I, I prefer when I'm standing here. Yeah, no, no, we were, yeah. we were brought in and we weren't. They, they wanted fucking robots to a certain degree like, but yeah. obviously do your funnies when you give your funnies but do what you're fucking told and we were both happy we were like yeah. absolutely yeah. this makes life much simpler if we do what we're told like yeah, we weren't there to change most it. actors would be generous and they'll say look I'll pull back or I'll deliver the line but I'll, I, they turn their back and let you talk to somebody else so they're not over yeah 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 they're yeah. not trying to egg their way into everything you know it was uh, they were a good bunch of, I was raging yeah. because said uh Diva wasn't there that year. She was, uh, 
her services were no longer required. Mm. And they told us every other year they'd been fucking some drama with this bollocks or this one or that one. And the stories were amazing. Mm. They were shag all drama. Yeah. Our year. It all ran ridiculously smoothly, apparently. You had George like, McMahon, didn't you? Well? We did, yeah, yeah. yeah. This year now. That's we, obviously why, you know. Yeah, he's just just smooth. He's a slick character, all right. He's a mad bastard, but he's he's not doing it this year because he started his own stage school yeah, yeah. out in Newcastle, in uh, County Dublin, Newcastle. But um, Samantha Mumba is down this year. Oh yeah, she's good. She's an old neighbour of mine from way is she? back. Yeah, when she lives up the road from me when she was starting off. Go away, young young one. Yeah. Um, but is does the old stalwart Richie Hayes is back? Do you know yeah, Richie? Richie, I know of him. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, is, yeah a great panto. Well, Richie, it was Richie schooled me. I think he he got He's a brilliant. he got a small bit of respite with me because I came in the door and I was like, "Well, boys, do you know?" And he was like, "Oh, all oh, 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 right." And total non theatre bloke. I I okay. I get to hang out with this fella and talk about guns and stuff for yeah. a morning at least. Like the singer, isn't he, Richie? Oh my god, he turned up at our wedding. Like I say, turned up. He but he was invited to our wedding and. He'd said, he goes, look, if your man wants to take a break, and he was a noble singer, the fellow we had, like, he, yeah. they'd won all sorts of awards and stuff. And he'd said it to him, look, if you do want to go for, you know, whatever, I'll step in if you need me to. I said, that's very generous. I said, but you're here to enjoy yourself and have a drink. And I was out the side or whatever, and I was chatting with somebody, and I see the singer, he was he was having a just a Coke or a water or whatever, relaxing himself. And it, Richie had obviously gotten to go ahead to go in and sing. And he was kind of looking at me, he goes, so I'm glad that Richie fella is, is going to sing. And Richie fired up singing inside. Yeah. You want to see his face change? He went, Jesus Christ. Now you talk about upstaging. Yeah, yeah. As I said to Rich, Richie went in and sang ludicrously well. like. Yeah. And he came away and he's, I said, man, and you could see your man running back in. He couldn't wait till he got back off his fucking mic. Like, but oh, yeah. Richie committed to two songs and he sang them. But I, as Richie came down, I went, you pretty much slept with that man's wife just there doing that. Like, cause the entire band enjoyed themselves too yeah, playing yeah. with him. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Even yeah. though your man's a fine singer, yeah, Richie. Yeah. Oh, he is. He's brilliant. seamlessly. He did that. Didn't he do, um, he did the voice. The voice. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, not, but, he's, but he was, he, he served his time up in Gaty Panto here in Dublin as well. And he was brilliant in it. You know? Oh yeah. 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 I mean, he, I should not surprise. But you, I couldn't thank him enough because the second he came in the door, he threw the arm around him and, said, and gave me the basics to start with anyway. Yeah, like, yeah, look, yeah. You don't want to look like a fucking tit. Tough, though, isn't it? Jesus, man, I lost a stone and a half last Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how many how many times I've I've said this on it. Fucking stone. I've never lost yeah, weight at Christmas. I've never done it, but I've heard it's just so hard. It's, but it's, it's, it's powerful. It's great, it's great, but it's you're working hard. Oh, you are. Like you're bollocks at night, like, and you're bollocks the next morning. But you know what? It's when you kind of get into your groove, then you're sucking diesel. Then, yeah, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. it's you, you earn your money. You earn your money. But I, it was a massive, massive. Uh, I, it definitely gave, it opened up a couple of different kind of avenues that weren't in my brain before yeah. for even taking to stand up. Then I definitely was more dramatic. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And, and yeah. it was, you, you were getting more. You were hitting the back wall in the stand. Yeah, I was. Yeah, but there was there was more juice in the story then. Like yeah, I was going, yeah. fuck! I can I can get more out of this yeah, these jokes yeah. that I had before. Like I, yeah. there's a bit more in it because it definitely did open up. And it was good. For, I said it to anybody. I said if you have the opportunity to do something like that, take yeah, it with both yeah. hands because it was. To be immersed with people who were very good at their job was good. Was yeah, good too, yeah, like, yeah. and it was no harsh shit. And like, you were either in this for a reason. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like in stand up, it's kind of subjective. Like a fella can be, I'm fucking dynamite, and I go, okay, you are. Yeah, I assume because there's no license. You know, it's yeah, not like yeah. you serve your time. Like you yeah, just, yeah. if if the wind is blowing right, you're in. You're yeah, in. Like, yeah, and yeah. I mean, if you fit the right criteria that's needed at the moment for our society, yeah, yeah. you're in. But in, in this, these were all people who had broke their bollocks down through the years. Like, there was lad, one lad now at the lead, he was in West End. Like, he was wor- he was making good money yeah, at yeah. fucking stage acting, yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Around the world, like, yeah, yeah. and everybody else was a proper pro. And myself and Spain were even looking at each other, and because they were in awe of us to be able to tell jokes. And I was like, no, 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 no. You know, you people are actually fucking like yeah, athletes, yeah. basically. Like, you know what I mean? We're, you're so happy at what you're doing too. Like, yeah. there was no cribbing. That yeah. was one thing I noticed. It was not an awful lot of giving out. No, no. Uh, it's, you know, it's a great business. Like, it is. It's very rewarding. It is, when, isn't it? You know, just to make yourself feel good about it. You do a good show. But then there are... And, and that's that's the real reward. That's the real kick, you know, is that, that you're... But we tend to forget sometimes, and and Panto is a great kind of yardstick to measure it by. Mm. You're there to entertain people. Oh yeah, yeah. There's, I mean? there's, you've no other you've purpose. Up, like you've no other purpose. Like you know, so don't be wanking off. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. If, if yeah. you're going to do it, do it right and do it well, and they'll they'll reward you for it. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and um, so that's the simply, you know. So 
don't be bringing some concept to the thing that's yeah. not there, you know. Uh, but the, in the old days, you'd be told that. I mean, I would be told that in the Abbey straight away if you were trying something. What the fuck are you doing? You're not reinventing the wheel here. No, like, no, yeah. Hold on, hold on a second. You walk in, you say the fucking line, you get out. You, the performance is your job. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but don't be, um, don't be, you're not, you're, you're not solo here. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come in, come in and do it. But you can't say that now. All right, can you not? Yeah, you can, but you, you, you can't really because, uh, uh, you know, if you say it, like that's the way I was schooled, you know. Uh, you know, but yeah. you, you would in Panto because Panto has to work. Oh, it has right. to work. There's no. But you go into a conceptual piece of theatre. Oh, jeez, yeah, of course, yeah. It's licensed for any kind of shite. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how many times do you read, uh, I've just seen one yeah. of the most incredible pieces of theatre <laughs> yeah. you could imagine. The performances are electric. Like, it's just incredible. And you know it's a pile of shite. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because everybody's pushing their own thing now, and Facebook tells you everything that you must see, must, must see, must see. So the old thing of word of mouth still applies. Uh, you listen to the right people and go see the You'll right find it, yeah, You'll for sure, yeah, yeah. Because there is so much. But then I feel sorry for the youngsters starting off now. So I'm not blaming youngsters in general, but I feel sorry for them because, going back to what I said to you earlier, you know, when we were all young fellas starting off here, and like, we literally, I've name checked four venues here where all of us met up, and th- that's all of us that were. Do you know what I mean? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, now there's... Like uh, I mean, I thousands, like this. thousands, and there are degree courses in acting and yeah. all that, and it's not you only learn on the job. Like of course, exactly yeah, you yeah, say, yeah. You know, but then there are so many struggling to try and get into it. You know, at least we had no money when we started, and all he had no money. Like, all of yeah, us had yeah, no yeah. money, and there was only a few of us. Yeah, you know, so you know, if you got in at all, someone said, "Oh, I mean, this, this young fellow I saw the other night." Do you know what I mean? And you, your name got made a bit like that. Yeah. And my first jobs were out of uh, the Oscar school, out of uh, the tutors that were there. Because like, they were practitioners. They were working as well. They'd said to the director in the alley, I know that. Like, he's a student of mine. He's good. He's really good. And, and maybe that goes on to a certain extent yeah. now, but not really. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and you got to be known early enough, you know. And Did I read right? Were you in an episode of Remington Steel? I was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, way back. Yeah. That's pretty cool, like, isn't that? Was, yeah, I, I, that was, again, I was starting off at the time, I think. Uh, he came over here and did two different seasons of uh, Remington Steel. And uh, um, he, he, uh, he came in two different seasons. The second season had a whole thing with Chris O'Neill and Frank Kelly. Right. It said Chris yeah, O'Neill. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was in an early one where we were two young fellas down in the docks, you know. Yeah. The stupid joke. Uh, um, you know, could you direct me to um, Ballon or whatever it yeah. is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you could go down there and uh, take the first right and then you go left again and you head straight out. But I wouldn't go that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I would fucking, you know, boom, yeah. boom. Boom, boom, yeah, yeah. yeah so that was, yeah. I was only young fella at the time, yeah. That was... But that was probably uh, one of the first times I got to stand in front of a camera, you know. What was the strangest thing you were in? Or the strangest part you ever played? Stage or, or telly? Uh, um, I mean, we, we, we got you as a as a guard and as a rector as well. Yeah. Well. Was there anyone where you went, oh, Jesus, I'm not, I'm not cut out for this, like, you know. No, when, not really. I mean, I try to find something and everything. There's no, but, uh, I mean, I'm sure I think of something afterwards, but there's nothing really that I've been kind of, um, there's been shows I've been in that I went, Jesus Christ, what was I doing in that? You know, <laughs> what, you know um, but I do Anthem. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's, anything, do you know what? That was the honest answer I was looking for. Just, just, just cut straight to the point. I'll yeah. fucking do it, Tom. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. yeah, I played a lot of guards, all right. I played a lot of fucking cops over the. I did the demo and Ivory. We were talking about it earlier. Uh, you looked like you were having fun on that too. Like there was a few points where you were, you came in, you bust up a party. That was the only kind of half scene we kind of had. Yeah, half share. Yeah. You came in, you bust up a party of. Well, I was in enough of them that got busted up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would the you? Bed sit lands. It, it seemed like you were. 
uh, Randall and you know yeah yeah uh, D, but you, you, yeah, I remember even that one you you were kind of half cracking up laughing you were is it drugs is it is it drugs oh, Damien like and you're drugs. are you on the heroin is it it was just everybody was just fucking laughing because it looked like you were just no running. I gave him a list of stuff that I had read in the manual earlier like, <laughs> were you on speed or were you what, what were you on were you on that PCP are you on that are you, you know? <laughs> so I was told to look out for those kind of things earlier on in the day was that where you when you lived in in the Rat Mines district when you moved first yeah yeah we lived yeah we lived in Flatland yeah in, in Bedsit land and it's shit hot now around there like you wouldn't hardly get a you wouldn't get a fucking car well, I there. passed down Grove Park in Rat Mines that was one of the first bedsits I was in and I went down to the house yeah and I was there in 19... 19- 80, 81, and the fucking place was the same. Uh, six <laughs> you go away. Yeah, it was still the same. Like, nothing had changed. And I'd say the same fella has it, and he's been making money on that place. I stayed with a fella called... Uh, oh, Jesus. Uh, fuck, uh, Paddy. Uh, uh, he's a great man for the fry-up, so the whole house smelled of fry-up, and I think everyone used to come into our flat and eat fry-ups, just there with the taste, like, Christ. Um, but yeah, the house looked the same. Go away. Yeah. Like you could, yeah, there's a few. I'd say if I had still the key, <laughs> I could have tried the door. <laughs> Brilliant. I mean, I'd, say it's, I'd say the room I was in now is probably about 900 a month. Oh, easy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. Like, and, and I mean, uh, you. It was about tenner when I was there. Are you still living in Dublin? Yeah, yeah. I still live in Dublin, yeah. And do you get home to Roscommon much? Uh, no, I do, yeah. Uh, I still have a close connection. I have all family down there, yeah. I love going back to Ruscom. It's a great town, you know. It is actually a good yeah. town, yeah. It is. And, um, I go back, yeah. I'll go back the weekend now, maybe. Uh, I haven't been down that much because I've been working, which is strange for my business. But, uh, yeah, I've been working pretty hard, so I don't get down. Because you're continuously, you have a continuous uh, part on, on Fair City. Fair City yeah. yeah, you spend the weekends learning lines. like. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fairly intense, too. Like, does it... Like the, it made my now he writes on part of it, uh, yeah. Richie Conroy. Oh, Richie, yeah. Don's uh, Don Conroy's oh, that That's who he is. Yeah, I know the, the name, old fella. Yeah, 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 I've seen his name on a script. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, but he was saying like the weekend could be gone. They might give you notes on a Friday night. Like, oh, and he yeah. says, "All right, we're not going home to your mother, so we're writing for the weekend." Like, but it's I suppose that's what you get. Well, for an him. average scene can be five, three and a half pages to five pages of dialogue, right? Yeah, yeah. Jesus. So. Um, and then they shoot uh, per set. So you're shooting four episodes a week. That's yeah. Four half hours a week. That's unreal. So if you're shooting in the bar, uh, they'll do all the bar scenes with everyone in it. Okay, then right. Yeah, yeah. to uh, the community centre and do all those scenes there. And your stuff might all be in the one or two. You might have one or two in one. And then by Wednesday, you could be into 12 okay. in one venue at averaging two pages. So you could be... You could have to have off 24, 26 Good Jesus. pages. Good Because I was, my one and only big part on Fair City was years ago. I think I played, was there, what was the black haired girl's name? She had the cafe. Wasn't it? Oh. Oh Lord. Whatever her name was anyway. Black haired girl with the cafe. Oh yes, Kira Callan. Yes. She was talking to her and today, yeah. I was her solicitor or something. Yeah. It didn't really matter what I was. I had a briefcase and a suit. Yeah. And the, the scene opened up of me going, that's grand, I'll give you a call next week. Clipping the yoke together and off. Out the door. Oh, sure, I was made after that. Did. I, I, I did, and I, I have it on IMDb, the whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it kind of... But they motor, like, it was... Yeah. They fucking motor they through motor. stuff, like... Yeah. It's, come on, drive on, we've... We're not hanging around for this we're now, like... I this. remember, oh, who's it? I think she, actually... Or the red haired girl, she's like, I keep on remember, forget people. Yeah. But she'd missed, for continuity, she was missing her wedding ring. And she, Jesus Christ, I didn't have my wedding ring in that one. And whoever was directing that day went, fucking drive on. Drive on, yeah. You're, you yeah your hand isn't out of shot. We haven't time to go back on it. And it was kind of good to see it that way. It was nearly like working in a construction site in the 80s. Drive on. To Nobody. It. And then they'll come around and say, you had your hair a bit to the left in that last scene. And you go, I have no fear. <laughs> <laughs> and say, well, are you open the top collar and say, but I've been out in the street and back in. Would I not? Would I not open the collar at any point during the day? You know, after <laughs> a big feed or something. You know, <laughs> would I open the top button or something? Yeah. Ah, we better. It's continuity. And you go, all right, yeah, yeah. And then you, you, 
they'd let something go where you said I killed all belong. <laughs> <laughs> and the next day, I would have wanted to know that's not fair. But do you know what I mean? I suppose as the situation, it depends on the person. I was probably yeah. there too. On the there was a couple of days where they were under pressure to get shit out too, like into yeah. man. But listen, they're great. They're, you know, I mean, it is a massive amount of work. You're producing a whole. You're producing a film. You're yeah, yeah, two hours. Two hours a week. And, like, it takes such kind of... There's so much stuff that has to be taken into account. The changes, just the costume changes you'd have. And, you know, and you're trying to... Like, there's, there's great people there. Like, yeah. You tell you, yeah, no, yeah. you're in that short, you know. And I know I'm laughing about opening a car, but they, you, you have, they have to know what you're wearing each time because you're absolutely confused. You're going around talking to yourself. Yeah. You don't know what you have on here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and, and so there's that pressure. And, uh, you know, cameramen... Like, they come in and they do it and, you know, they'll stand there all day long shooting you. At yeah. least you get to sit down at some stage. Do you know what I mean? Or you might get a rest or something and get to clear your head and start again. It's I... like a big... And it's very daunting to come into it because it's... You know, you could have 10 or 12 actors on the floor at one time. Which is an institution. Like yeah, its own there's thing, cameras like... and sound and everything is going and you're going, Jesus Christ. So even, kind of, even actors who kind of uh, would be well known and have yeah, yeah. they go oh my god oh my god he says you're alright you're alright just keep swimming yeah. keep swimming you know and uh, because it, it can be daunting are they going to move it off site uh, that's the, that's the, uh, at the moment yeah the, 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 that site where the, the lot Fair City lot is on is, is being sold oh wait I tell a lie it's sold it's gone I had, an, I had another part I had yeah I had I had I was driving they put a taxi sign on my car and they paid me for the car and all for the day. Yeah, I had to drive up and down about seventy four times. Yeah, and up, it, the, uh, up and down that. Yeah, you, we need good drivers there. So well, see, this is it. They spotted it in me. They went yeah, closing yeah. in a briefcase. I could see his hand eye coordination. There's a bit of a hollow at the last bit where you go down. You this, know. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you might hit it once, but you won't do it again. It, you know. To be honest, I even spotted it beforehand. Spot I didn't clearly, actually hit it. You know, I'm used to bad roads where I'm from, like so. Yeah, this is yeah, a joy, yeah. like you lose the holes in the road. Yeah, but it was it was enjoyable to see it. Like you know what I mean? Yes, yeah, so there's I, constant movement of traffic going in and out. But that's that's the background. You have to have that background. Yeah, I I had done like I'd done the extra stuff a few times. Where you're sitting in the back just babbling with a yeah a piss poor pint, like you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, or whatever, yeah, like yeah. but just. It was, you know, it was perfect because I was, you'd be sitting there the whole day, they might only use it once, yeah. but you're getting, you're getting paid for the whole day, you're getting paid for the whole day. and you're sitting in the green room and yeah. I was just writing jokes. Well, I, I really kind of, I always think that, you know, um, for an actor to cut his teeth, you talked about going into Panto. I think any actor who wants to work in television or film uh, should go in and do a bit of Fair City. Absolutely. You learn so much so fast. Oh, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And you learn how to, you know how to get around it and, and, and how to move and what we were saying and where your positioning is because you know you walk on to another set and it's it's a doddle after doing Fair City yeah that's know? that's the truth of it yeah because I like before it was Fair City I'd done any stuff and I'd been an extra probably 20 times on the thing and you yeah. got a grasp then of alright oh, the camera don't be looking down I just did what I was told. Yeah. And they seemed very happy with the fact that I did exactly what I was fucking told. Yeah. Don't yeah. look straight down the fucking yeah, thing, you yeah. gobshite. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and then, sure, I suppose Damo and I were come on through Republic Italia, really. Oh, yeah. Like, you know what and I mean? Were you, were you doing the Republic... Were you on Damo and the Republic Italia? Yeah. Well, right? you see, they'd looked for a partner. This, they'd always talked about this fella, Tarquin, and he would pop up on phones and stuff like that. Tarquin was ringing or whatever, but they yeah. never found somebody that could fit the bill. They tried a couple of lads that RT had put their way and they went, No, it. we need a Tipperary now. We need a tip fella who can do a South Dublin accent. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like that episode of The Simpsons, like when they have, when they're shooting a movie and your man's painting a horse. To, and he goes, well, Why are you painting horses? He goes, Oh, Re- or to look like a cow he says all oh, real cows don't look like cows <laughs> on set <sense." laughs> and, and this is what you need when you need a load of ho- a horse or so we just tape a bunch of cats together you know what I mean That's, it looks the fair and that was the same. but it, came, I, it happened through a party really that yeah, I yeah. knew Jules and Jules had introduced me and yeah. I had the crack with the accent I was, there was free drink oh yeah herself good, yeah. herself had a, mm. had a flat in Ranala and she was going out to work she was running a nightclub at the time and I had no gig on that night so I said sure I'll stay here and scratch my hole and the next thing got a text gone around the corner there's an album launch for Damo and Ivor oh, yeah. do you want to come around and I said sure I wouldn't know anybody at that she says there's free cider I went 
I have the coat on already. I'll be down to you. There's a free Clamwell, the Clamwell champagne in the Moorhampton Hotel. This is yeah. right up my street. And then I went and I got steaming drunk and I had the crack then with him. And that's how you met Andy, is it? That was how I met Andy and I yeah. just put on the accent because I'd been talking to his brother in that accent and we were messing with yeah, it. Like yeah, that isn't yeah. a silly accent, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that yeah. Is, and he he kind of started smirking. He was in full character even in the... Because oh, did an album launch, like... He's brilliant, I have to say. He's, he's some operator Andy, like, isn't he? Like, but and He's great. And do you know what? He's turned out to be a fine actor. Oh, is he listening to the... He, he would my pay. Anyway, he's a, he's a fine actor outside just that comedian. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. To, like, to take on three characters. Jesus, most, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. That's Eddie Murphy stuff, like, to yeah, be doing, like, yeah. Most actors won't do that. You know? No, just no, no. attempt it. Well, he was saying to me that he went to the... I think he must... He, I'm sure he said it t- to... In interviews and stuff, but he, he attempted to we go... We love you, Andy, if you're listening. He's mighty man. Mighty man. Mighty man. He, he does a, he's a stronger tip accent than me when he puts it on. Like it's, he sounds like one of the unbelievables. And he's, but he, he went into the Gaiety School of Acting and you once said, like, she got real conceptual with him, like, you know, and oh, this is an apple here now. And he went, oh, oh fuck it, right, yeah. I'm out to do it. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, on. thanks for that. I'll, I'll. But I suppose he's kind of learned on the fly, but there's an element to of you, in a lot of cases, if you don't have it, you don't have it. Like, yeah, if you don't. You could it. probably learn yeah. it like any trade. You can, correct. But you'll yeah. never be a craftsman, like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, Well, you, you, the thing is, you have it to start with. If you have yeah, start, that's what I mean. You can yeah, own yeah. it after that. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Whatever way you want to go, and he certainly has. You know. But I, t- I did re-audition around the corner here in the Je- Checker Hotel for the part when the movie came up, or the, the TV show came up, I should say. You did, yeah. Right. I had to re- re-audition. Like, you had to go through the Apple phase, and your uh, conceptual. Well, yeah. what I did was I went to the other. I didn't know. Again, I I didn't know. I knew only just enough. I was taken ignorant enough only to know a little bit, and yeah. I didn't. And I didn't dare pretend that I knew anything outside of that. So yeah. they had written the character. And in fairness, Andy and, and in Jews, this is out of our hands, Tom. You yeah, you exactly. have to re audition for this part that you already have in Republic of Telly. But there was a, a letterbox scene where I was to be talking through a letterbox, and I read this, and I I read the lines, and I learned the fucking lines, and I went, well, all right. I I won't. I'll just be the character walking in there. I said, "This is the easiest way to do it." Yeah, yeah. Again, not knowing that some people actually do do that, but I yeah. bought a letterbox and I kept it inside Go my man. jacket pocket. Ah, brilliant! And I was sitting there at a table of six people, and then a camera in front of me, a young one of about seventeen, was reading the lines <laughs> to me. And it made you know what I mean. I blanked her out. I just pretended that was I was hearing. You, you pretended you were talking to a letterbox, yeah. And I took out as this, when it came to this scene, I took out the letterbox and put it in front of the camera. Oh, man. And I talked through the letterbox, oh, and really? they broke their whole laugh. And, and apparently that was the clincher because right. a couple of right good lads had come in, yeah, who yeah. were able to do you know. Yeah, who, yeah, yeah. Um, but your man said, "If this fucker's mad enough to buy yeah, a letterbox in a hardware the man, shop, like, that's the, do you know what I mean? Man we want, that's know. the fellow we want, like, yeah, you know." Yeah. It's, I mean, that's sometimes what. That's how. But I didn't know that. That's you had to have an edge. I just went, "Well, this is." They obviously want me to do this at a hundred percent. Then this is what a hundred percent is. You know what I mean? Like, and Andy was going. So you can't be, you can't be taught that kind of shit. Like, no, you you're can't. either a half mad hunter. Or yeah, right? you know what I mean. Like, that's what that's what you need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like apparently, uh, Jesus, what's her name? We were trying to remember her name. They they played Norma. Oh, Norma. 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 Norma apparently didn't break character either. She had, because the character was never around before. She had developed a character she developed it, yeah. and walked in this mad South Dublin mother who was eating pill pop and lunatic. She was doing handstands and everything and she was making herself sick and, and everything inside the audition. And the, the whole place was just silent. They didn't know what to do with her, but she said, something good has to come from this woman because that is one of the most powerful auditions. She came in a total lunatic, nearly kicked the door off the hinges like coming in. And I said, yeah, if, if she's that off the, off the wall, then that's, she's got well, to. I just went in as myself, like. Just take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, you, you really nailed it. And as you said, you went, yeah, you, yeah. you did the Dead Lewis on it. I was going to ask him, what's the story? <laughs> Does anybody know where the toilet is around <laughs> yeah, here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you auditioning? <laughs> <laughs> it's strange, like, so, I think like that, how it can take off, isn't it? Like, because you'll go, you'd assume people want to, if it's a TV show they're going to be into, it would have to be American based or whatever. But to so quintessentially Dublin based even yeah, like. yeah. and the whole country loved it like the whole country loved it but but this writing is great oh yeah yeah and yeah this, the, the, the situation I mean um, I remember the first, uh, well I read the first script from the first series but the second series I remember sitting in the kitchen reading it and breaking my shite laughing and that wasn't the dialogue that was just all the the, the situation all the stuff, situation yeah. and you know uh, just the way it, 
the way it was formed. Yeah. That you just, you didn't even have to get to the dialogue before you were laughing. You just you went. You knew it was, yeah. yeah uh, this takes place in such and such and such and such happens. You go, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah. How are you going to do this? <laughs> well, brilliant though. It was, ah, brilliant. Jesus, like, it was as funny as hell. And of course, your character then fell for Grano. Like, it was, <laughs> it just, it was absolutely brilliant. I don't know. It's, it's, I loved it. I loved it. I love the movie now. I think it's going to be great. It was, it, it, at the time we were out, and I really thought it was fantastic. We missed you terribly, Tom. You know, I mean, we. we well, sure. Yeah, you ha- he, he didn't have the balance of right country <laughs> lunatic. Yeah, running around the place, yeah, making yeah. shit of things like yeah. yeah, which is, I mean, like that. Cause I still, still to this day, like I have taxi drivers still shouting at me, like. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? And there's almost an element of uh, disappointment when they hear my accent in for real. Oh, like yeah. I'd been lying to him about us about something like. Do you know, I've gotten it like, oh, Jesus, you're not even from. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, but my, my and, and likewise, my, uh, my, um, my whole kind of, uh, what's the word, uh, kudos or whatever, went way up with all the young kids that generally would have been trying to pick me pocket. <laughs> <laughs> once, once they realised that was in Tame One Iver. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus, you know, you're from Tame One Iver, come here, come here. <laughs> They drop all the goods that they just robbed <laughs> to look for a photograph <laughs> and give you back the phone. <laughs> it's a uh, yeah, cause, geez, I never because t- I wouldn't have had I'd nothing like that before. Like you know yeah. what I mean? This was just fish out of water altogether because all I'd only ever done stand up. Like and yeah. you'd only get recognised barely half walking out of the same theatre. They just saw you in like yeah, at a comedy yeah. club. They saw you in like, but yeah. this was a bizarre concert because you must have been like during the. Even the, the Glen Road days, like I mean, we joked about you being a, mm. a, a rock star, like, but I mean, you must have been instantly recognisable because there was nothing else to be watching. There was yeah. no, not no other distractions. No, there was kind of used no to it internet. A bit more now, you know, yeah, seeing get, things. Yeah, and, but oh no, it was huge, particularly going down the country. I mean, it was oh massive. Jesus, yeah, 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 it was massive. Like, where was Glen Road filmed? Was that in RT as well? Uh, no, uh, Glen Road. Well, it was. Yeah, there was a studio. We did two. I think it was, but they only filmed half an hour in a week. So like the, the, it would never have lasted. You know? Yeah, we only did a half an hour, but it wasn't really a soap. Um, they shot out in Kilcool. Uh, All right. So we did, I think, three, uh, two days out there, and maybe one day in studio or two days in studio to film half an hour, and we took two weeks to do that. We rehearsed for a week as well. So, like, it, it, it was kind of doomed in terms of the way things were moving. Yes. Yeah. 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 You know, because what used to happen is they'd have to bring trucks. They'd have to bring an OB unit. Massive what? fucking OB unit, you know, like Jesus. the Yolks see going into Crow Park, you know. We used to have to bring them out, out to Wicklow. So you needed at least three acres first before you started <laughs> to, to park everyone. Just, you're bringing your own little festival out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So that was every week and they're going up like, and then you had a, a generator out to go out, a massive truck. Of course, generator. yes. Kilcoon yeah. didn't get electricity until 1998. Just, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and you had to bring out like... Uh, I had to be eight or ten trucks going out and camera trucks yeah. and lighting trucks. And it was a big, big, huge operation that was going out there, you know, uh, every week for half, for essentially 30 minutes of a programme, you know. Yeah, I suppose, but they had no competition either. Like, they had no I mean, competition. There's even, I, like, there's even still to this day people talk about the, the Glen Row fear, like, you know what I mean? If you had your homework done, that fucking yeah. music came on on Sunday night, you were like, yeah. oh, Christ, go on, I'll, yeah, watch, I'll watch it so. I'll watch it so, because everything's downhill after. Yes, yeah, 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 I'm going to be, in, not that I didn't give much of a shit about homework, just... Yeah. I you, yeah, yeah. You knew it was approaching the time. Yeah, Monday was coming. Monday was coming when that song, when that music came on. Like yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. But it becomes ironic at this stage. Like I'm amazed they didn't have like because I was at Electric Picnic, and there was so much nostalgia being popped up everywhere with things like yeah. because there was a whole area called the Minefield where the likes right. of me shouldn't be at all. At all, you know, oh, just right. it's spoken word and poetry reading and all that kind of stuff. It's nice to go over and see people like that, you know. But so no funny stories there, no? I don't, I'm sure there, there seemed very serious while I walked through there anyway, but it was good. I, I came from the comedy tent where people are, ha- are happy enough to tell, you know, listen to me for 20 minutes telling yeah. dick jokes, like, you know, it's just... Yeah. Um, but we, I might go and see you now before I go with the spoken word, it might drive me... Yeah, it minutes. could be heavy. I did a gig here one night, here actually, and it was, I was hosting it, I think, and one of the lads, the organisers said, would you host the time? And I'll do... I'm putting it on because in fairness he was open to everything Danny like he's 100% like he do a great thing for uh, musicians upstairs called the whiskey sessions oh. I don't know how it went out the, the window but it was great it was great to see the standard of musician that was here in Ireland normally yeah. so but down here one night there was a lad um, it was a 
couple of poets and they were kind of new age and it was good to see it like but yeah. there was one there was this one fucker came on at the beginning and he'd obviously brought a bunch of like finger clickers you know they were actually clicking fingers oh, and stuff. yeah yeah Jesus. but he was wearing a polo neck which already he was only about 20 years of age you know you could see him smoking a slimline cigarette you know one of them yeah, lads yeah, like yeah. and he did this this spoken beat, word beat post yeah. trying to be the beat post from the but he, he did this spoken word thing then because I thought he was going to be a poet but he did this thing where he he put on an accent and he, a British accent and he he rolled all his R's in the way that Jonathan Ross would I think he was trying to be a young a young like he could have been in the young ones or something I think you know what I mean he was trying to be he was performing it was and, but to see the amount like the, the people who had actually come thinking this was going to be a comedy night and to see this bollocks doing this thing it was one of the best 20 minutes I've ever watched because I love awkwardness like yeah. I loved it yeah, yeah, yeah. and like there was people people were actually clicking their fingers down the back for him like he was this fellow was going he was probably going to go, go out and ride 20 birds after because there was a bunch of women came in to see this fellow like he was shit hot in their world you know what I mean so it doesn't I, that's the thing I suppose it, you know we were looking at him going who's that going yeah. who's that going like but you know what he was doing he was dead right in what he was doing because yeah. he had a following in what he was doing but I went on, it was brilliant to go on the stage and go well now Jesus <laughs> you see people yeah. say this is let's going. get back to reality now, yeah right? fucking hell like even the poets are going to make this fella look you know but it was it was but the, I, I've now done that electric picnic thing is it is it, is it, is it a... oh, just, you'd, you you would enjoy it would it's I? oh you would there's I'll give them their dues like I was walking around and you're going look at this mad fucker here now like yeah. and it didn't matter if you wanted to have sparkles flying out of your hole walking around the place nobody gave a bollocks but yet there was a, a cleanliness to the place in that right. and it was good natured kind of vibe to yeah, it that you like never at any point gone. thought you were going to get stabbed right. do you know yeah 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 it was unreal it's, it's remarkable this one said about I, I know you're okay you won't get stabbed at this one yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was that level of almost non-judgment walking yeah, around right, the place right, like right. Well, do you know good, yeah. but just, it, and it wasn't so cool that it was fucking wanky either it yeah. was people were having crack oh, yeah. and you had your wild savages like who were flaking into the beer do you know what I mean as well but there was enough I, yeah I would be more familiar now with the trip to tip and all that yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of a... you can definitely yeah. tell that this is for this is a world away from what I was because I had no interest yeah. in going to these places but I was asked to perform at it and I went you know what let's stay down in Everett because we've never done I've done a couple of festivals but it, quite literally I'll be in the gate out the fucking door again right. the engine will be still running out in the car park like. Okay. and this one we stopped down for the night and it was well worth it they had the money they've put into the, they put into that electric picnic yeah. every year like you know you just round every corner around, and it's built on uh, it's built on on Stradbally Estate, Estate yeah. so to, it looks the business too around you know everything is laid out very very nice like you know and there's down to even like there's a f- no matter what food you want to, there was one bloke there was just making French baguettes freshly out of a van right do you know it was yeah. gone to that obscurity like yeah, you know right, but, right, right. but it was definitely but I walked but there was a whole area then for spoken word and if you did mm. want to sit in on a conversation about you know the rights of Pygmies, you know, you, that was gref- definitely I going to be happening. I must try it out, Annie. It would beat Barry's Hotel, I'm sure, anyway. That's the <laughs> There's going to be no brass <laughs> bar Mid-week. getting bet out the fucking door with a brass bar. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do you know what? I think we're, yeah, yeah we're about, about, we've been an hour done. Jesus. It went seamlessly enough, didn't it? We had yeah. very little interruptions as well, but and all yeah, the rest of it. But, uh, have, oh, yeah, it so catch you every week, really. Have you, you, yeah. You're continuously on, on watch because you haven't time for anything else, really, to be... I ha- well, or have, yeah. you, have you something coming up out of your own accord that's no I haven't really I'm kind of uh, I, I, I'm, I do Fair City uh, at the moment uh, then I'll take a break there'll be a break from that because you you run a natural cycle on it of course yeah yeah and, and it's, it's a story cycle and then you'll dip out I was very lucky this year in that um, every well lucky or unlucky uh, anything else I was going to do all came at the same time of course yeah so in fairness to Fair City they, they let me out to do Dame One Ivor which I was delighted because I, I would have been awful upset if I couldn't have done it and uh, and then I did a little bit on this thing called Striking Out this oh yes Amy Huberman yes thing, yeah yeah I yeah I just finished well I have another day to do on it but uh, that's interesting so you get to meet different people and work with different people it just that's the thing you can't really get bored with it no you can't you know and, uh, with good good or bad you can't get bored with this business like sure no, you can't and like. do you know what Fair City has been very good to me I keep saying this because 
uh, if I hadn't been in that, I, I, I don't think people would, they, they don't, they wouldn't have noticed it's the old thing about work creates work. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, if you know what you're doing and, you know, you're, you're, you're all right, you you know, long may continue, you know. Absolutely. Right. Well, thank you very, very much. And that was, that was, that was lovely, wasn't it? It's lovely. The tea was good and the chat was good. Thanks a million. Thanks very much, Tom.